I translate, uh, I think one of the classes that I taught, a, um, back about a year ago for, um, a bunch of different, uh, fire service professionals from agencies all over was teaching, um, was teaching curriculum that was developed at a, at a federal level. And I can't tell you doing the amount of prep work of how do I translate all of these firefighters and uh, some law enforcement officers and some EMS professionals that had PhDs and this, this, that, and the other. And I'm like, how do I translate this to the guy that barely made it through high school? Because they have to get through <clears throat> basically two college courses in six days, or they have to pay to go through it all over again. <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 on your, it's, it's like yeah. the, this culture, I don't, I don't, I, I love the curriculum, but the, the lingo is, is very, I found it very difficult for a lot of people or for me to even translate without having to put in a whole tremendous amount of time, which from the feedback, I, I thought I was somewhat successful at doing that, but it's almost like a completely different jargon, much like, you know, the fire service or EMS or any, you know, software engineer, any trade has this technical jargon. And how do you translate that for people outside that trade or profession? Yeah, and that's, you know, I'm not against technical jargon, you know, and I'm not saying you are at all either. It's, like it's a necessary thing for a developed state of knowledge. And look, oh, and we'll come to me coming to the Byzantine East here in a second, but I was trained in a lot of Western stuff, both, both you can't really do a lot of philosophy in like 14th, 14th, 15th, 16th century stuff in the West, but also doing a lot of theological texts. Mm -hmm. And I'm aware of how the West needed to develop actually a, a pretty tight and robust science, you know, quasi-scientific vocabulary of theology. But those who sit around and sort of lisp their little vocabulary at each other for those who understand their language, I don't like that. Um, and I feel like so much, I feel like even Catholic academia can be like that among those who are, um, you know, faithful Catholics. The other side, though, as well, though, is I feel that there's a kind of stultification. Look, you have a family with, with multiple kids and you provide. And, of course, people become professors. They provide for the family. I'm not trying to be too negative. But there's a way in which people are willing to be basically walked over by the lack of payment that you get as a professor and act as though it's a fine thing because they so desire to be a professor that you're just, it's okay. It's okay. I will just take on more work. I won't really act as though I'm someone who has, you know, kind of rights as a, an expert in my field. You know, I'm just glad to have the position that I'm in and I'm basically going to, basically going to live the same kind of vagrant life of a graduate student. That sounds like almost every firefighter's gripe I know. I mean, mm -hmm. sometimes this sadly happens where people just, they'll, they'll adjunct for forever. Mm -hmm. Now, that's the funny thing. That's where I've, in a sense, ended up. I always tell people I'm a glorified adjunct. Um, but I ended up doing it because I got a call from the dean of the Byzantine Seminary, and I had just started going pretty regularly, probably for about nine months, to the local Ruthenian church. So I had... Uh, I had no plans to get married, but I ended up finding the perfect wife for myself while I was still in D.C. We actually had deep connections. Wait a second. You, you, found, you found her in D.C.? Yeah. Isn't that weird? I know. It's not the place that one looks It's like the life, heart of the beast you know? in, in some yeah. people's eyes. 